Hey guys, we are live. Welcome to our Westworld Season 1, Episode 2 review, Chestnut. And with me is Mr. Lou Rod. How's it going, Lou? I'm doing well. How are you doing today? Good, good, good. All right, let's kick things off. I well, know the first let, episode of let, Westworld. Wait, 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 wait. I know you weren't too pleased with the first episode, but you're on the second episode. What do you think? Um, for me, the slow, first episode was a little slow pacing. It was still okay. I wasn't going to stay with it, but after I watched your review, I was like, okay, you know what? Let me give it one more episode and see mm -hmm. before I just dump this show. And then episode two, the pacing was a little better. And I kind of figured out, okay, so it seems to be they focused on one of the AI robots per episode by the looks of it. Yeah. So you'll see different scenarios, but it was still better. And I'm con a little... Confused. Curious about the guy who gets shot but doesn't die. They like bounce off him like he's a Terminator. Oh no, no, he's a human. That's the main point from the first episode. Is uh, the host, aka the robots, cannot shoot human beings and kill them. So that's the idea of Westworld. So you go into Westworld, and you know they have all these different storylines. Granted, there's always a main storyline that the writers want to push, but you can go on different paths. So you saw in this episode, uh, the new guy that came in, he, he helped that guy on the floor. He went to take him on a treasure hunt somewhere. And you can pick any storyline you want to, to do in the show. Yeah. Uh, but as a human, you can't be killed, but you can kill the hosts. <laughs> that one guy who shot up everybody was funny. Yeah, so uh, Ed Harris's character, the man in black, is yeah, the man in black. And he's going on a very different quest altogether. So the the thing about Westworld, I think a lot of people don't understand. And I was having this discussion with Sam yesterday, and I think this is where they might have a problem because I was also having this discussion with a friend earlier today. Is Westworld plays like an RPG? It's, it's playing like a role play game. It is exactly a role-playing game. So you jump into Westworld, get on the train. There is a major storyline. And in in the first episode, the major storyline was Suarez coming in and you know shooting up everybody in the town. This episode, they now are trying to change that main storyline. But once you get into Westworld, you can jump into many stories. So you saw the man in black went to another part of Westworld we'd never seen, and he shot uh -huh. up everybody there. True. And that's a whole different storyline. So people have to realize that Westworld is your own journey and they're just showing people's parts of the journey and also the AIs. I think what's interesting is now that we found out that Jeffrey Wright's character, the black guy, he's talking to he's the- He's not black, dude. Whatever. He is the, the, the you know, what do we call the Dominican now? Is that what it is? I think he's Hispanic, but he could be Dominican, Puerto Rican because he, he looks some of that descent, but he's got more of a Latin vibe to him. As if I he's recall, not. I think he spoke a little Spanish in Hunger Games. So he could speak Spanish. What? He ain't huh? black. Okay. Anyway, um, the scientist. We refer to him as the scientist. Scientist got a little look, folks. You may have not seen this episode yet. HBO released it on yeah, Friday. So, so definitely as a little token of gratitude to all the New York Comic Con people and all that. Yeah. Now so this will contain little spoilers. Yes. Now he started talking to the robot from season uh, episode one. He's ah. having these private conversations with her. It doesn't look like I don't know whether he's being paid by somebody or he's looking for something himself, but his conversations are very different altogether. Yeah. And that puts him motive of what is he trying to do. And then we now see more of Ford, a.k.a. Anthony Hopkins' character, you know, the, the guy who started the park. He has this bigger storyline, which we think that's the same storyline that um, the man in black is trying to chase. Because you remember how the writer says he's trying to do this new storyline, and Ford says, no, your story is crap. Yeah. <laughs> he just shot him down quickly. Yeah, quick. Because he, it is, I think there's a story he's been planning and building for years that to incorporate everything in Westworld altogether. But we don't know what that story is. We don't know how it entails. We don't know how, maybe because he was waiting till he brings the AI to life, that these stories will actually take place on, on, on a better scale. Um, and then you also have the fact that, um, you know, the uh, 
uh, what's her name? Uh, the prostitute at the at the salon. She starts having uh -huh. memories. She's having nightmares. Yeah. She's having nightmares of past things that she's done as a character. And one of the guys made a good point and said, you know, in, oh, the lady, she's like, imagine if these things remember all the things we've done to them. Well, see, the thing that got me was with her, what are her memories? We saw the Indian with like the white paint and all that. Yeah. And then go talking back to the guy who was creating a new story. He has an Indian all in white paint. Yeah, exactly. So and, I was like, okay. And I think that's the thing this we went through. It's that um, you're going to find out that a lot of these things, I think, I mean, the main story, I think, is the birth of AI from the show. That's probably the main thing you see. But the other thing I think a lot of people are going to find out is the motives. You know, I remember I was watching Collider, the first episode, one person was saying, you know, maybe Ford is or is a machine himself or AI, and he's trying to recreate it. I don't think that's the case, but I want to know his motive for creating AI here True. In, in this one. I also want to know- And the that's motive. probably something that doesn't get answered until the season finale. Yeah, I mean, I don't think this season. I think you get a hint of what it is. But what's interesting is when he, remember the first time he went into the park and he saw that little boy? That was him. That was him as a kid, I think. I think he made himself. I think so too. You know? Because <laughs> the way they were talking and the past memories sharing, it was like, okay, that boy, him? Yeah. And I think that's it's a little eerie that he he made himself and put himself in the park. And even when he was getting close to the way he was supposed to go, he he's smart enough to know he's like he doesn't want to show himself where it is because it can lead to something else. So he was like, you know, run along. And I think I think to me, one of the cool parts, but also the parts that a lot of people don't probably are not getting in the show is the fact that there are a lot of audio cues. To how to control the robots and it's not clear because it's very casual in conversation yeah you know and you know like you know he was talking to the boy and he goes run along now you have to go he says like one keyword and the robot's like yes i have to go now i just love yeah it's kind of like it really is kind of like you playing um mass effect and you you know you, you know the games you, you have different conversations you can pick and you pick one conversation and the conversation is done and you just move on to another character so it plays it plays almost like a video game uh in a sense where you can have multiple conversations and you can pick conversation structure in, in the show like i said the show has become interesting and i'm i'll keep going is he, oh, what, so what do you think about the man in black what is he running from in the real world because you remember he said he's not coming he's not, he's not going back home but he's been there for over 30 years that he's been going there for over 30 years it's like it could be death or he just doesn't want to be around his family yeah i mean and this is the thing that somebody somebody mentioned he said you know he might be somebody who's just a i mean he's rich enough to come there so he's not like a pencil pusher but because uh, you remember he he killed off at least 20 hosts and then they told the security guys like oh this guy's being taken off host should we stop him and the guy was like, for this guy, no. You know, so he's somebody important. Yeah, he has to be with you the know, way the story is going. He's somebody important. I mean, you might imagine he's like he's the president or something, or like somebody up there. Who knows? It's interesting. I'm I'm more intrigued with his story, what he's looking for. Yeah. You know, I like the fact where he was, you know, asking uh the other the other character that he saved from the hanging. You know, where's the entrance to the maze? Where's the entrance? And automatically his daughter just turned around and started like, you know, talking like a real robot and was like, Yeah, they, this is for this is this is the entrance here, but it's not meant for you. And he's like, I'll take it anyway. And he leaves. And I'm like something something is up with that character. I think I think right now, I think the first two episodes have laid out exposition. I would have I would have liked them to have played episode one and two together, together. two hour block for most people because that would have given them more exposition to okay what's good i mean to me one was good but one also threw in a lot of stuff at the very beginning i think two did a better job of just laying it out a little bit more and and then you know, even the best part where the you know the the prostitute woke up and you know she saw them cutting her up and you know she's wondering what is going on here you know all that stuff i think will play in as it goes down the line, because now these machines are having issues left and right. Oh yeah, but see, I feel bad for James Masterson. He can't catch a break in nothing. 
No, no. But see, that's the thing. I think his character is going to have a very interesting arc altogether. Because right now he's he's, he's he's playing the very good robot who falls in love with the other girl. But what's going to happen when, because we see previews from the next episode, you know, the guy who came in, and we'll talk about that in a second, the guy who came in falls in love with the robot. So how is he going yeah, to feel? How is he going to feel about I, that? I don't know. I thought he was a hobo in this first episode he was in. No, I mean, I think I think he's one of those guys who just normally is like, he's very, that's why his friend brought him there. His friend's like, look, you're very tentative. You're very closed up. I want you to open up. And you can see his friend's behavior. And you saw the stuff his friend did. I think that was actually cool showing us the, the scale of Westworld from the outside. So, you know, they get in there. You can see even on the train coming in there, they all have all the Westworld hosts taking care of them. As soon as he gets, he, he walks in. His friend walks to two hosts who already know him. And then he's standing yeah. there. And there the host is asking him questions. Do you have any health problems, this and that? And, but the amount of money, see, that's the thing. So I had this discussion with my friend. I want to ask you this. Um, they talked about cutting costs in the show. But yet, for each for each guest, look at the changing room. Look at all the clothes, the kind of expenditure there. Um, do you think it's realistic how they set, I mean, in this, whatever this world is, because we don't know how, what year it is or what uh, time and also how much people pay. But do you think that setting is realistic enough because they're talking about cutting costs and not making it a little bit more, you know, tailored? Or is it just to enhance the whole experience? I don't know. I think the change room and all that enhances the experience. You forget to pick out what you want to wear. It, that was a nice changing room. Oh yeah, and yeah. then a hat full of uh, the wall of hats. You know how you have the wall of audio? They had yeah. the wall of hats. They had the wall of hats, and and even there too. Remember when the uh, the host was telling me, "No, I can help you change. I can stay with you." And the guy was like, mm, "No." And even when his nah, friend, friend was in is in the other room, and I, but I think he's that kind of guy. He was looking for the right. He was looking for the right thing, and then we saw it towards the end. When um, what's her name? I can't remember the host's name, but you know the 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 girl from the first episode. Once that can drops, it's funny how the can always drops. I think she just purposely throws that thing on the ground. <laughs> well, that's part of her programming. Programming, yes. Yeah, can. The can drops, and it's almost like he's coming and he's replaced uh, James Madison uh, Masterson's uh, character. So I wonder how his character will feel afterwards because you know those memories are going to kick in especially remember his sure. path has always been connected to that girl as much as possible and now that it's cut off by somebody else i mean you're going to have a jealous um host which shouldn't happen <laughs> this 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 show is like i said it's trippy yeah uh so ic sports says cutting costs in areas like the cold storage room but not where the customers notice no i definitely agree i mean the cold storage room should not be there i mean either you re to me it's either you reprogram and you sell those uh hosts to somebody else because it looks like those hosts are used in other places too or, be. Least, or you know they could use a host for cleanup or fixing you know, areas of, of uh, Westworld instead of having humans fix it. You know how in the first episode you talk about how come it's it, there's water here and it's not fixed? That's what you could use the hose for, right? That, yeah. will, cut, that will cut your costs. Um, but yeah, I agree. You don't want to cut costs in areas where people will see it. And also, you don't want to put more... I, I, you know, I agree with Ford where uh, the writer wanted 50 more hosts for his useless... New story, like the battle at Red River. Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, I, I think I think he plays the character that we all know is useless. I think he's the main villain. No, I don't think so. I, I have a feeling he's the villain. No, nah, it'd, it'd, it'd be too, it'd be too obvious for the show, though. Oh, that's what shows are now obvious. No, I mean, I don't think he's the main. I think the main villain is uh, is not the man in black. I think the main villain is the girl herself. One of the main villains. I think her as the AI villain is one, and I think um, the scientist's girlfriend, aka the the head manager, the head of security. Not the head of security. No, 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 she's not head of security. She's head of whatever. She's the, she, she manages the whole park. Yeah, that she, threw me for a loop. Uh, no, I know. I know. When, once the door knocked in his apartment, I was like, "Somebody's coming to visit," and I can only guess who. 
And he's trying to talk to her and she doesn't want to talk. So there's something that management is pushing that she can't say. Mm. Well, he, or he or he just wants to, you know, talk before they get the deed on, you know. Some people do like to talk before doing the thing. I mean, yeah, but this was after, remember. So he went into still talk. He went in, you could tell he would see. I think the scientist is trying to play a game where he he's trying to figure out what Ford wants. And he's also trying to figure out what management wants because Ford is the one who started the park, but he doesn't own it anymore. He's just like uh, he's just like majority shareholder, right? At this point, management uh -huh. are all the other stockholders who own the park, and they want something else from the park. So Ford, I mean, the scientist is trying to find out what is going on. See, he, he spends time with Ford. He's he's sleeping with the manager of the park, and he's trying to bring find out exactly what is going on. And then he's having those private meetings with you know, uh, De Dolores. The yeah, Dolores, the yeah. Robot. Dolores, because she's the first one, which means, and she's the only one left. And she's got a bunch of memories probably cooped up in that head. Which means the storyline starts from her. It'll start and end with her. her. Exactly. So that, I think, that's where it, it goes, um, you know, with it. It'll be interesting to see how all, all those points play out. But I think for most people, if you're watching the show and you're, getting a little confused i think you should focus on the man in black and also each uh host that they focus for that episode yeah yeah because every other thing there are many other storylines that are going on at the same time um but the man in black is the main main outside storyline and the host the whatever host they showcase this episode so i believe next episode is james madison's character again no 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 him because I think, you know, Remember, they kind of focused on him on the first episode. No, not really, though. It was, it was, it was uh, her. It was, it was her. It was just, you know, because he's in love with her. It's always, it was always there. But remember, at the end of that episode, it ended with her finding the gun, and then, um, no gun. She she went out to the field, and then she slapped a fly on her neck. It was her father and all that stuff. Then remember the first episode, he he kept on just dying. Yeah, man. Oof. But the end of this he died in this one too. Yeah, but the end of this episode, the camera ended on him. So I think it's it's him that jumps into the next uh well the preview showed him in like a silver war gear show with, shooting that one machine gun type. Yeah, thing. yeah, him and um the man in black who was dressed he was also dressed in like silver war gear. Um, yeah, the man in black seems to be the focus of every episode. Yeah, because he's going he's going on a different storyline. That's why I like his character. He's he's like literally he's like he's like the person who goes in and you buy Zelda, right? And everybody's playing the main quest. And then you find out that, you know, Miyamoto built this one other really secret storyline. And he's like, Yep, that's the one I'm going for. Everybody's going this way. He's like, Nope, I'm taking this path right here. So you always want to show his story because you want to know where he's going at some point till he sure. meets, because I think they'll always still meet up at the end. Um, I see Spot says about uh, Ford no longer being controlled. I think Ford doesn't want to be in control. He wants to create life. From everything yeah. he said, he's been trying to create life in the show, and he talks about uh, all the all the updates as being mistakes. How he wants to, um, you know, how he wants to see the reveries grow with his characters, and how the scientists let him. Because technically, all this could have ended if the scientists had just cut off all the updates uh-huh yeah that is true yep. they would have never did those updates so if you had cut it off and reverted back and i think that's that's where you know most of those things would be it's sad though how like each each uh host can be easily manipulated with aggression and <laughs> And um, remember how they were showing the, the prostitute each time she was meeting the new guests, they either bumped her aggression up or dropped her sensitivity down because she couldn't keep keeping guests. I didn't even know that they focused on that in the show. I thought they just let you jump in. I didn't know that they were like, no, 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 we want to make sure that each prostitute that we have in the brothel will actually pick up a, a guest. Yeah, but she didn't pick up guests. Well, she picked them up and moved them on to others. Yeah, but see, that's that's not part of her programming. If you notice, I, don't, I think most people won't notice that it was a subtle change of saying that's not what she wanted to do. She was almost helping the other one constantly, you know. So I think that made that made a lot of sense. Like I said, I'm intrigued to see where this is going. 
Yeah, I mean, we have what seven more episodes of the show. So well, there's only eight episodes. No, oh sorry, not for some reason I thought it was episode three. We have eight more episodes left on the show. My bad. Um, oh, okay. I I, th I think episode three. I think things will pick up where certain storylines will bump up. I think the first two episodes really. The one mistake they made, they should have just made a two-hour block and then uh -huh. have a second episode because this show needs a lot of just things to spread out. Because now I agree. part of the things I'm interested to see, I'm interested to know where this world is. How big is this park? It's big. Yeah. And like, I mean, what do people in the outside world do? You know, and how much money well, are, you, how, are you paying to be in Westworld? I mean, are you dropping like 10 mil? 20 Who million? knows what they're dropping is, but it's an expensive park. Yeah, and again, yeah, just don't bring your kids to Westworld. That's not even a smart idea. Family members, dude. Family members. Why? I mean, you might, think about it. You bring your kid to Westworld. You get off the train. Somebody's shooting a host right there. <laughs> it's the society we live in. I guess so. I mean, you know, you know the cool thing also. Do you notice like I think every single animal in the West World is made? Yeah, I noticed that. They would make the horses, the snake, because Ford was playing with the snake like he was a wizard. Yeah, no, the horses I can understand, right? Because you don't want, you know, people will shoot a horse just because they want to in this in this world. But I didn't expect like, but I guess so. I mean, I guess you want to make it as controlled as possible so, so no one dies of a snake bite uh -huh. <laughs> you know, in there and then they sue you. Because you know, if somebody's uh -huh. paying twenty million to go to Westworld and he, he gets a snake bite, and then they sue you, they probably sue you for like half a billion dollars at this point in this time in the future. So this is the human version of Jurassic Park. Yeah, it is. Um, I, I agree. I think you don't. I don't. I don't want to see the outside world to to at least season two. Forget a season. So I want to see just a glimpse of it, and then we can start getting an understanding of why people go to Westworld. True. Because because yet yeah, now they make it seem like yeah people go to Westworld it, it's it's fun but nothing is fun in Westworld it's all depravity it's all about the worst of human behavior I mean the nicest person there is James Madison's character so far yeah oh and the and the new guy those are the only two nice people in Westworld all the humans are terrible <laughs> the human beings are bad it just really. <laughs> depraved creatures coming into Westworld. I mean, his friend having dinner just stabbed the guy and he's like, ah, I don't feel like eating anymore. Dude, he lost a lot of blood. I was like, damn. Well, they make them that's like a lot of blood coming out. They make them like real humans, right? You hit an artery, that's it. True. Yeah. True that, but all right, guys, we got five minutes until the kickoff. Yeah. But um, yeah, I definitely think um, the show is going on a good path. I think a lot of people just need to kind of look at stick it, with it. Just, just stick, stick with it, it and flow with it because it's got some interesting story but i agree with you uh, uh spots uh uh ed harris's character is very interesting because you know he's he's the main protagonist that is just on a different path compared to he's one of the reasons why i stayed watching because i'm con con curious to see what the hell he's looking for and he enjo he enjoys just killing this host man even though it's easy like, think about it it's easy they can't kill you there's nothing Dude, what kind of bullets does he have that go through stone? I don't know. See, I, I don't even know. Understand. I don't, see, that's what I want to get though, because you know it's the same guns that they all use. Oh, I can. I, I know what it is though. I think. No, no. Can you use that to shoot a real human being too? That's the thing. Like, say he gets pissed with somebody else. I don't know. Way. But that's the question. How do you know if it's human or AI? Because they look so real. No, but I mean, they will attack you like immediately. And most humans behave a certain way. Like, you know, when somebody's new to Westworld or if it's not a human being, like he's been there for so long that he notices, like he noticed all the little tendencies. He's like, ah, oh, they give you new, new commands. They give you, you know, he's like, oh, Ted, remember the first episode, Ted, are you, uh, are you going to beg this time? Did they add begging to your routine? And, <laughs> and then Ted, Ted didn't. It's like, ah, oh, okay, I guess they upgraded you a little bit better. Okay. So um, it definitely would be interesting to see. Uh, let's see. Speaking of the snake and fly, uh, some non-robotic living things in organic uh, movies. Someone thought the snake was robotic and it wasn't, and killed them, killed the guests. Hmm. Oh, in the original movie, yeah, definitely so. So I, th I guess that's why probably this one they were like, nah, let's just make everything robotic, 
Because, yeah, it would make sense if you have a snake. Oh, or, you got to understand. When did that movie come out? Back in the, early, in the 70s? Yeah. Budgets weren't the same. So you couldn't make everything AI back then. <laughs> you would have killed your budget. Oh, yeah, definitely. All right, guys. Thank you, Swats, for joining us. It was fun chatting in Westworld. We will be back next week, Monday, uh, because, of course, the show will revert back to its original time of 10 uh, p.m. Is it 10 p.m., right? Or 9 p.m. I think it's 9. So 9 p.m. on uh, HBO. You know what? Maybe. I mean, we might we might move it to an hour, an hour after the show. All depends. What do you think? But then the following week, we're going back to Monday because, you know, Negan's kill is coming up, dude. Oh, yeah. Sorry. So uh, Walking Dead comes <laughs> back on Sunday. Walking Dead. It's coming back in two Monday. weeks. Two weeks from today. Yeah. Um, thinking Ford would be killed by a rattlesnake, he thinks is robotic in the future episode. No, nah, I don't think so. No, Ford has a bigger plan. Ford is Ford is a mastermind. You don't want, and again, I think Anthony Hopkins as a character, he does such a good job by not showing his true emotion, but showing something, and you're like, he's up to something too. Yeah, you're like, what are you trying to do? Oh, yeah, we do more reviews of Westworld, we'll do the whole season, so definitely, definitely watch and check out. So Thank you very much, guys, for watching. Thank you, Lou, for joining us. I know we're trying to run and catch some football. Uh, follow Lou on, on Twitter. His handle is Buderod right here. Uh, Buderod on Twitter. He's also part of the Border Work Network, so you can check his stuff uh, on the website, as well as uh, Border Work. Follow us on Twitter and also on YouTube. Uh, it's actually on board, my bad, for the channel itself. Uh, I know I'm just like on a, on a roll here, but it's on board for the channel. Subscribe. Thank you very much. Thank you for subscribing, Swats, and always enjoy your entertainment. Boom. <laughs>